So everyone wants to know the secret sauce, the special stuff that people are doing in their interviews to help win over the interviewer and get their place in medicine. So today I'll be sharing with you guys the top 10 things that I did while I was preparing for my interviews and during the interview itself that helped me get an offer from several medical schools in Australia. Hey everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you don't know me, my name is Emil and I'm a first year medical student studying at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. And on this channel, we talk about everything to do with medicine. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd like to let you all know that I'm actually offering one-on-one -on -one and group coaching for the interviews. So if you'd like to do a full practice interview with me and get specific feedback on how you can improve your interview taking skills and how I would have answered the same questions that you answered, make sure to check out the link in the description box below and make sure to get in quickly because I only have about five spots available. All right, so let's get into the first tip of this video, which is that you should treat MMIs and panel interviews as essentially the same in your preparation process. The reason I say this is because even though they are actually different interviews, you still need the same skills of confidence, charisma, and knowledge to actually do well in either one of these interviews. And that's why you should aim on practicing these skills rather than practicing for a certain format of question. The other thing to know is that in many panel interviews, you can actually get an MMI scenario given to you during the panel interview. And in many MMI interviews, you can actually get asked questions that are very similar to the type that you'll be asked in your panel interviews. My second tip for the interviews is one of the biggest ones that everyone should be following, which is that you should prepare for your interviews, but that doesn't mean that you should recite your prepared answers. The really important thing to understand is that if you just go into the interview without having prepared anything and thinking, oh, my personality will carry me through it, you'll be setting yourself up for failure because you don't actually have any idea of what your actual stances on the questions might be. A really nice way to illustrate this point is that if you imagine someone being asked why they want to do medicine, the prepared answer will almost always come off as boring and recited, and it will sound similar to what a lot of applicants are actually doing. But if you prepared an answer and you had a general idea of what you were going to talk about, but you were willing to deviate from the script, you might realize that earlier on in the interview, you talked about rural medicine and why you think rural medicine is important. And as a result, you can bring in into this question how you talked about previously in the interview about how you really like rural medicine. And that's part of the reason why you want to do medicine and you have a passion for the career. So hopefully through that, you can see straight away that the person who prepares but doesn't recite their answer instantly comes across as so much more thoughtful and insightful because it seems that they're really engaging with the stuff that's being talked about in the interview. And as a result, that will always impress the interviewer. So my next tip leads on from the previous one, which is that you should absolutely have some idea of the key issues that are present in medicine at the moment. In Australia, some of the things that are really crucial to know about are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health and rural medicine. But there are also tons of other things that you should have a general or rudimentary idea on and have a stance on, such as issues like having an aging population, offering better care for disabled people in the healthcare system, being more gender inclusive in the healthcare system, and also other things that are really important like inequality and sexism in the healthcare system as well. Often in the interviews, it actually doesn't necessarily matter what your opinion actually is, as long as you show the interviewers that you are thinking deeply about these issues and how they will impact the future of the world. The next tip I have for the interviews in general is that you should definitely work on timing in your practice. It's quite surprising, but the MMIs and the interviews are actually fairly time pressured in that often when you're answering questions, you won't have enough time to actually answer them to the degree of depth that you actually want. So as a result, it's really important in your practice to be doing it with time conditions so that you know how to structure your answers better and to be able to get the main points that you want across in the limited time that you have. Another thing you should practice is what you'll be doing in that one and a half to two minutes where you have the time to read the scenario in the MMI. The next tip I have is one for the actual interview itself, which is that you should always listen and pay attention to the interviewer during the interview. So often in MMIs, examiners will actually be asked to remain stony faced where they won't show any emotion during your interview and they're not allowed to nod. However, often examiners struggle to do this because it's sort of natural as a human to be nodding when someone is saying something to you. So you can actually get a lot of information on how you're doing from whether the examiner is nodding at what you're saying. And if they look perplexed or confused, you should be really careful to maybe think about what you're explaining and maybe explain it in a bit more clarity. The other thing that's really important in this is that you should listen to what the examiner is saying and what's being said in the interview as a whole. As you hopefully saw in the why medicine example that I did earlier, interviewees can take themselves to the next level by just bringing in different parts of the interview into the present moment and sort of synthesizing all of that information together to give their 
their answer. Before I get into the next five tips I have for the interview process, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you found these tips helpful so far. Okay, so the next tip I have is that you should absolutely be practicing your mannerisms and appearance before the interview. So what you should figure out pretty early on is where you'll be actually taking your interview because most of the interviews will be on Zoom. So make sure you check out how you're actually appearing on your Zoom, whether you have good lighting, whether your audio is good, whether your internet connection is good. The other thing that you should make sure to check is your mannerisms and your overall appearance on the Zoom call because sometimes you actually say certain words repeatedly or you say um and ah uh, or you use a lot of filler words without even realizing it. So the next tip I have is one that it's absolutely huge for the interview process which is that you should always articulate your thinking in the interviews. And what articulating your thinking actually means is that in a lot of the questions you'll be asked in the interviews there will be no correct answer. So as a result you should show the interviewers that it is a pretty great issue and that there are reasons for both sides. So actually go through in your interview and explain why you think one side has this argument which is strong and the other side has this argument which is also strong and why as a result it becomes a very unclear issue. Show them that you're thinking deeply, not that you seem to have the answers for everything. My next tip for the interviews is that you should always practice with other people. Of course there is time and place for practicing by yourself and building your knowledge and practicing your interview appearance but you should always practice with other people because you really need the pressure of another person being there to sometimes bring out the things that will happen during the interview. For a person you can get to do practice with, I'd highly recommend trying to find someone else who possibly wants to get into medicine and might be doing the MMI as well. But you can also do practice with maybe a family friend of a parent who you don't necessarily know that well and is also someone who might be older than you so that you sort of feel the pressure of talking to a stranger about these issues. It's also helpful if this person is a doctor, but that isn't necessarily important. Now, my next tip is one that hopefully should be obvious, but it's that you should always embrace the feedback you get in practice. So when you're doing practice with other people, you'll often get feedbacks about your mannerisms, the way you speak, whether you're doing things correctly, and you should make sure to actually take all of that information in and to think about it carefully and how you can improve on what's going on. Make sure you swallow your pride and try not to get defensive if people are giving you good feedback. My last tip for this video is one for the actual interview, which is that you should never let a question or station throw you off from your interview. Often in the interview process, you will get asked questions or given stations that are just weird or have really hard questions. And as a result, it's often the case that you might mess up your answer to one question or you might think that you've done badly. The first thing to know is that probably you're getting it worse in your head than it actually was. Often when you think you've answered a question badly, you actually haven't done that bad of a job. And then also the second thing to know is that you should definitely not let this throw you off because especially in the interviews and in the MMIs, people are asking you lots of questions. And as a result, you have lots of chances to actually redeem yourself, never lose hope during an interview. And if you stuffed a question up, it's very likely that tons of other people have done the same thing. Those were the tips that helped me do as well as I possibly could on the interview. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out this video about all of the medical schools in Australia and how you can apply to them.